Welcome to the new lecture of uh, Boiler under the edges of his team uh, in chemical process safety. Now, before we discuss about the other aspects of Boiler, um, let us have a look at what we studied in the previous lecture. We had uh, the introduction of his team, what is the importance of his team, discussed about the what is his team, why the steam is used, how do we create the steam in which theoretically we had discussed that what are the integral part of a steam generation plant, how do we identify the steam properties and we started the boiler concept of boiler in which uh, basic anatomy of boiler we were discussing. Now, in this particular lecture we will discuss the broad spectrum of boiler with respect to the classification and other issues pertaining to the boilers. Now, see uh, because steam is having the wide choice, wide variety of uh, uses. Therefore, we are having a wide spectrum or wide choices of boilers too. So, when we are having the n number of choices, then again the concept of the classification do occur. So, the, there are various uh, boiler classification has been suggested by the various workers. One classification is based on according to the flow of water and hot gas. So, this may be the fire in tube and water in tube because uh, the basically the boiler is the assembly of uh, tubes and shell. Now, here you see that uh, fire is or a flue gases they are within the tube system and these two bundle of tube is submerged with the water. Now, upon heating you can produce the steam. So, fire is in the tube side. Now, in this particular uh, boiler where the water in tube, the water is inside the tube and these bundle of tubes is surrounded by the fire. So, the heat transfer can take place. So, based on the use, we ca one can use the any type of a boiler. Another is uh, when we talk about the fire in tube type of boiler, they are again sub classified into two different category. One is the internal fired boilers and second is the external fired boilers. Now, when we talk about the internal fired boilers, there may be the horizontal uh, tubular boilers or vertical tubular boilers. So, they are having the like short fire box, locomotive type of boiler, compact in nature, scotch and the vertical tube boilers, the straight vertical shell, vertical tube like Cochrane vertical shell horizontal tube boiler. This is one of the example. External uh, fired boiler that is a horizontal return tubular type of boiler, they are having the short fire box and they are very compact in nature. Now, there are certain advantages uh, attached with the fire in tube boilers. One is that they are low cost, uh, the fluctuation of steam demand can be met easily and it is as we discussed that it is compact in size. Now, when we talk about the water in tube type of a boiler, they are again divided into three different uh, categories. One is the horizontal straight tubes, this may be the longitudinal drum or a cross drum. There may be a bent tube, may be two drum, three drum, low head three drums or four drums even they can have a four drums and a cyclone fired boilers. Now, again there are certain advantages associated with uh, the um, uh, water in tube type of boiler. Uh, you can obtain the high pressure, the heating surface is quite large, therefore, steam can be generated easily. The larger heating surface area, this can be obtained by the use of a large number of tubes. So, you can embed the tubes accordingly, but obviously, you need to look the, the heat transfer aspect. Now, because of the high movement of water in tube, the rate of heat transfer become large resulting into the greater efficiency. Again, um, one may classify into the position of uh, furnace, maybe externally or internally. The internally uh, fired boilers, the great combustion chambers, 
usually enclosed within the boiler shell whereas in case of extreme externally fire uh, boiler the furnace and grates are separated from the boiler shell so suppose this is the boiler shell so they are separated over here in the um, externally fired boiler then sometimes people do classify based on the the circulation of water concept now this boiler can be classified uh, in two categories like natural circulation or the forced circulation then again one classification may be based on the position of the principal axis this may be either vertical horizontal or sometimes inclined like this then steam pressure we discussed about the various steam classification based on the pressure so it may be low pressure medium pressure high pressure etc then according to the application so see we discussed a lot about the various application of the steam in situ the boiler but broadly based on the application the broadly the boiler can be classified in two ways one is the stationary another one is the mobile stationary are more common mobile maybe marine locomotive type of a boiler now when we talk about the internally fire boiler in detail the furnace region space in which the combustion of fuel takes place is provided inside the boiler shell so if this is the boiler shell the 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 firing is provided inside and this is completely surrounded by the water cooled surface uh, now the method of internal firing is used in lancashire locomotive scotch type of a boiler there are externally fired boilers we discussed previously the furnace region which we discussed this is at the outside or built under uh, the boiler in a case of in case of babcock and wilcox boiler the externally fired boilers has the advantage that its furnace region is simple to construct and can be easily enlarged so based on the the capacity requirement you can have a various choices for the firing now see the boiler usually uh, producing steam at a pressure of say 18 kg force per centimeter square so one classification may be based on the pressure system may be high pressure boiler low pressure boiler medium pressure boiler etc so one is that uh, 80 kg force per centimeter square and above they are called as high pressure boilers so high pressure boilers they are referred as uh, webcock wilcox lemon velox benson boiler and a low pressure when sometimes in the broad spectrum you say that uh, the pressure requirement is uh, less than 80 kg force per centimeter square you may embedded one more category low pressure high pressure in between the medium pressure so the example of this the cochran cornish lancashire locomotive boiler all these are the example of the low pressure boilers so when we talk about the method of circulation of water so majority of the boilers they operate with the natural circulation that is a circulation set up by the convection current or by the gravity sometimes density difference is also attributed to this one however higher steam pressure the steam becomes dense and there is a very little difference in the density of steam water mixture and water alone one classification is uh, uh, again uh, we'd like to discuss more about this one that is the method of service so the boiler which are used for the stationary plant they are classified as land boilers and boilers which are readily dismantled and easily carried from one side to another side they are called the the portable boilers marine and uh, locomotive boiler we have already discussed this thing uh, let's talk about the steam drum and once through type of uh, steam generators now technical and economical factors indicate that most effective way to produce high pressure steam is to heat relatively small diameter tubes containing a continuous flow of water regardless of uh, whether the energy source is nuclear or a fossil fuel or something else two distinct boiling system are used to accomplish the task one 
one contained in a steam drum or fixed steam water separation point, other that do not termed as a once um, through steam generators or sometimes referred as OTSG. Now, let us talk about the steam drum. This is the most common and simplest control is the steam drum type of a system. Here you see that this is the steam drum. In this system, drum serves as the point of a separation of a steam from water throughout its boiler load range. See, previously we talked about that uh, the, the water and steam both, uh, both enjoys the same chamber. So, there must be a clear cut separation system through which you can separate the, the steam. Now, subcooled water that is less than the boiling temperature enters the tube which heat is applied. Now, here you see that water is input, heat is applied, here you may have uh, um, the steam out. Now, as the water flows through the tube, it is heated to the boiling point, bubbles are formed and wet steam is generated. In most boilers, the steam water mixture leaves the tube and enters the steam drum where the steam is separated from water. The remaining water is then usually mixed with the replacement water and returned to the heated tube. Once through boilers, uh, uh, common um, once through type of boiler is the Benson boiler in which there is no recirculation of water. That is the feed water leaves the tube as a stream, whereas in the controlled circulation boiler only a part of water is evaporated and remainder is circulated. So, uh, when we uh, further elaborate the once through steam generators without a steam drum, because uh, for other type of a boiler apart from this OTSG, you require the steam drum. So, without a steam drum for an OTSG system, subcooled water also enters the tube to which heat is applied, but flowing water turns into steam somewhere along the flow path. So, this is the flow path and you can experience the steam. Uh, this depending upon the water flow rate and heat input rate. So, these two are the variables for these OTSG. The flow rate and heat input are closely controlled and coordinated so that all the water is evaporated and only steam leaves the tube. So, there is no need of any kind of a steam drum fixed steam uh, water separation points are there. Now, let us talk about the circulation in uh, a steam drum. Now, here you see that uh, this is the steam drum, a steam is coming out, flow water in and um, here you are having the heat input, risers, uh, this is a simple natural. Now, for uh, system, for boiler with a fixed steam water separation point or a steam drum, a molecule of water can make many passes through a circulation loop before it leaves a, as a steam to the turbine generator. Now, there are two different type of approaches for the circulation are attributed. One is the natural or thermal circulation and a force or pump circulation. The natural cir uh, circulation, the down comer, this is the down comer, unheated tube uh, um, segment. Now, this is from A to B no steam is present, there is no steam. Now, heat addition generates a steam water mixture. So, you are input, you are providing the heat input at this juncture and this segment from B to C. Now, because the steam and steam water mixture in the segment B to C are less dense than the water segment A to B, gravity will cause the water to flow downward in the segment of A to B in this because of uh, the gravity aspect and this is called the steam water mixture in between this is uh, to move upward into the steam drum. Now, the rate of uh, water flow or circulation depends upon the difference in average density between the unheated water and heated steam water mixture. The total circulation rate in the natural system of circulation depends primarily upon four factors. One is that what is the height of the boiler, second is the what is the operating pressure, third what is the heat input rate 
and third uh, fourth is the free flow area of component. Now, the Taylor boilers sometimes they results in a large total pressure difference between the heated and unheated legs and therefore, this can produce a larger total flow rates. Uh, sometimes higher operating pressure provide high density stream and high density stream water mixture. This reduces the total weight difference between the heated and unheated segments and tend to reduce the flow rate. Uh, the higher heat input typically increases the amount of steam in the heated segment and reduces the average density of the steam water mixture increasing the total flow rate. So, by this way the total flow rate and alter. Um, an increase in the cross sectional that is the free flow area uh, for the water or steam water mixture may increase the circulation rate. So, for each unit of steam produced the amount of water entering the in the tube can vary from 3 to 25 units. Let us talk about uh, the forced or pumped circulation. Here you see that uh, there is small difference that here we are using the pump. Now, a mechanical pump is added to the simple flow loop and the pressure difference created by the pump controls the water flow rate, it is quite simple. Now, in today's high capacity, the high pressure units, mechanical steam water separators are needed for the economical operation of any uh, system where you require the moisture free uh, steam from the drum. With such devices installed in the drum, the vessel diameter and the cost can be significantly reduced. So, at a very high pressure, a point is reached where water no longer exhibits boiling behavior. Above this critical pressure and that is uh, around 22.1 mega Pascal, the water temperature continuously increases with the addition of heat. Now, um, the steam generators uh, can be designed to operate at pressures above this critical pressure. Drums and steam water separation, they are no longer required and the steam generator operates effectively on the once through principle. Now, when we are talking about uh, uh, the classification, another classification is based on the position and number of drums. These may be either single or multi drum, this may be positioned longitudinally or crosswise. Another, another uh, the classification steam is, uh, scheme is based on the design of gas passage. The gas may follow a single pass, return pass or multi-pass. One more classification is based on nature of drought. So, when the fuel burns in the furnace of the boiler with the natural circulation of air, the draft is named as natural drought. The artificial drought, the air is forced by means of a forced fan. So, you require some mechanical approach to remove the drought. Another classification can be given by the knowledge about the heat source. So, as we know that heat energy utilized for the conversion of fluid into the vapor, this can be derived from either the combustion of solid, liquid or gaseous fuel it may come from electrical and nuclear source or sometimes uh, hot wa waste gases of other chemical reactions those who are exothermic in nature or some of the combustion of uh, say other allied processes. Another classification is based on the material of construction of boiler shell. So, depending upon the material used for the construction of boiler shell, the boilers can be classified into cast iron boilers and steel boilers. So, power boilers they are usually fabricated from steel plates, low pressure heating boilers they are built either of cast iron or steel. Sometimes miniature boilers they have been fabricated from metals such as copper or stainless steel. So, that is purely based on the requirement. Now, let us talk about the shell boilers. Here you see that uh, which we were talking about uh, 
uh, the 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 fuel uh, fuel which is uh, circulating to the tube side. Now here this is the basic anatomy of a boiler. You see there this is the steam space, water and the tube bundles are surrounded by the water. Now here you see that whatever the combustible gases they come in first pass in the furnace tube imparting the, the energy to the water and then again there is a reversal. So, dry back reversal chamber and second pass tube and by this way they can come go out and they are generating the steam. Another configuration is that wet back reversal chamber. Here the combustion gases are always submerged with the water and they in, during the second pass they are coming out. So, this is the difference uh, in dry back reversal chamber and a wet back reversal chamber. Now, here we were talking about the various boilers. Here this is again uh, the anatomy of a boiler that is called a Lancashire boiler. It is very popular in various textile plant where you require the wet steam. So, the basic purpose of this uh, Lancashire boiler figure at this juncture that you can acquainted that uh, what are the different accessories and mountings they are attributed to the boiler. Now, here you see that uh, this is uh, uh, the fire tube boiler and this is submerged with the, the water. Now, here this is the steam space. Now, for any boiler the water is an integral part. Now, the maintenance of the water level is quite essential because if water level is low then there may be a chance that tubes may get destroyed and if water level is high in that case you may not, not get the, the steam at the desired properties. So, there must be a water level alarm. Since it is a pressure vessel as I told you it should be equipped with the, the safety valve. So, in case if pressure rises to the stipulated and, uh, rating, then it can open or it can be actuated and uh, excess pressure can be relieved to the point in question. Then sometimes uh, you may need to regulate the steam. So, uh, every boiler must equip with the steam control valve or sometimes uh, you may need to have some steam stop valve so that it, the, the equipment can be prevented for further damage. Uh, there must be some anti priming pipe because um, uh, this to remove the air entrapment between in the, in the water and, uh, and uh, the fire tube because air does not carry any kind of uh, heat value. So, at the start of the boiler you need to overcome the air entrapment. Uh, another thing is that the boiler must have one manhole so that all the internal mountings can be cleaned easily. That is what we are ex, uh, we, we were saying that accessibility of uh, uh, this is extremely important. There must be a line for the feed. I told you about the blow down in which uh, the sludge can be removed intermittently because the water is continuously being heated and over the period of time scales may get formed and this can be accumulated. They does not carry any kind of heat value so they intermittently they can be removed. So, for this there must be a, a blow down. Now, this is the source of coal. Here you the, this is the coal fired boiler. So, you need to uh, supply the coal. So, there must be a chamber for this firing. Here you can see the the the, the front view of uh, the, this uh, uh, boiler. Here this is the internal fuse. You can see the the, the tubes where the this is because basically this is the fire tube type of boiler. So, you can see that uh, the, these are the tubes. Now, through this pulley you can control the passage of uh, flue gases because uh, flue gases is having the substantial quantity of heat intake. So, in case if you wish to enhance the efficiency of uh, the boiler then you can control the passage so that they can have some retention time over there and they can pass the excess amount of energy to the water. Now, here you see that uh, this is uh, the typical photograph of a Lancashire boiler. We have already discussed this these things. Another is the economic boiler, two pass bo uh, dry bag boiler. Dry bag boiler we have already discussed in the previous slides. Now, here you see that uh, there is externally fired burner 
and this chimney for the discharge of a flue gas. Here uh, for the to achieve the maximum efficiency, the flue gases are passes in two passes for getting more and more efficiency. Similarly, we may have a wet back type of a three pass system. Here you see the burners, burner is imparting the heat energy, one pass, two pass and three pass for the maximization of this thing and uh, uh, you may get the steam at the desired temperature. Now, this is uh, the basic anatomy of uh, Cochrane boiler. This is the fire tube type of boiler. You can see easily here the tubes and various other mountings uh, for, for this particular uh, uh, boiler, water gauge and other type of mountings. We will discuss all these mountings in due course of time. The stop wall, the steam distribution uh, network, this is the manhole, etc. Now, the basic point of this Cochrane boiler are here. This is the oil fired, fired boiler. Now, here this is the gas inlet and gas outlet. You can see the tubes. This is the fire inside the tube and it is submerged with the, uh, with the water. So, you can produce the steam and you can discharge the steam from here. Now, in the modern day, we are always looking for a compact assembly to minimize the space requirement. So, the packaged boiler they came into existence. You can see that everything is in housed in this particular boiler. You can see the tubes, steam distribution wall, manhole, uh, water level indicators, firing media, etc. All these things are there. So, the packaged boiler, they resulted from the further development on the three pass economic wet boilers. Mostly these boilers, they were designed to use oil rather than coal. They are so called uh, package boiler because it comes as a complete package. So, once delivered to the si site, it requires only the steam, the water pipe, ne piping network, supply of fuel, electrical connection and uh, you, can, uh, you can start the things. So, these boilers are generally of shell type with the fire tube design so as to achieve the high heat transfer rate by both radiation and convection. There are certain features of these packaged boiler, a small combustion space and high heat release rate resulting in the faster evaporation, larger number of small diameter tubes leading to good convective heat transfer, forced or induced draft system. This may result in the good combustion. Now, number of passes resulting in a better overall heat transfer. You may experience the higher thermal efficiency level compared with other boilers. So, these boilers are classified based on the number of passes, the number of times the hot combustion gas pass through the boiler, maybe 2 pass, 3 pass, etc. So, the combustion chamber is taken as the first pass after which there may be 1, 2, 3 set of fire tubes. The most common boiler of this class is 3 pass unit with the 2 set of fire tubes and with exhaust gases those who can exit to the rear of the boiler. Another category that is called the, the four pass boiler or reverse flame or thimble type of boiler. Now, this is uh, you can see the variation uh, uh, on conventional boiler design. The combustion chamber is in the form of a thimble. You can see here the various thimbles um, and the burner fires down the center. So, you can see the profile of uh, flue gases. The flame double back on itself within the combustion chamber to come to the front of the boiler. The smoke tubes usually surrounded the thimble and pass flue gases to the rear of the boiler and chimney. There are various merits uh, associated with the water tube boiler. They have a small water content, therefore respond rapidly to the load change and heat input. The small diameter tube steam uh, diameter means much higher steam pressure. This can be tolerated and up to 160 bar may be used in the various power station. So, the design may include many burners in any of the wall giving horizontal or vertical firing options and the facility of uh, control of temperature and various part of the boiler. Now, let us talk about uh, some demerits of water tube boilers. 
because when merits are there then obviously you cannot overlook the demerits. Now they are not as simple to make in the packaged form as shell boilers which means that more work is required on site. So installation time cost etc that may be phenomenal. The option of multiple burner may give flexibility but the 30 or more burner used in the power station means the complex control systems are necessary because when more burners then obviously more chances of clogging wear and tear may take place. Another is uh, the miscellaneous uh, boiler type like coil boilers. They are once through type of boilers which we have already discussed and uh, they are referred to the some regulations with the boiler with no uh, uh, discriminable uh, water level. There are certain vertical tubeless packaged steam boiler, the domestic uh, type of a sink thing. Here there is no uh, tube, only thing is that you are having the burner supply, feed water supply and you get uh, the tubeless packaged steam uh, system and here you see that uh, the steam chest is there. So, uh, we have uh, uh, I mean if we go to the classification of uh, boilers in the broad spectrum there are two type of a boiler water tube boiler and a fire tube boiler. So, uh, let us talk that uh, merit of water tube boiler over fire tube boilers. Now, the generation of steam is much quicker due to small ratio of water content to steam content. This also helps in the reaching the steaming temperature in short time. It evaporative capacity is considerably larger and the steam pressure range is also high that is around 200 bar. The heating surfaces are more effective as the hot gases travel at right angle to the direction of water flow. The combustion efficiency is higher because complete combustion of fuel is possible as the combustion space is much larger. The thermal stresses in the boiler parts are less as different part of the boiler remain uh, in uniform temperature due to the quick circulation of water. The boilers can be easily transported and erected at different parts can be separated as quickly as possible. Now the damage uh, due to the bursting of uh, water tube is less serious. Therefore, water tube boilers are sometimes called the safety boilers and safety you know that this is a pressure vessel so safety is very important. All parts of the water tube boilers are easily accessible for cleaning, inspecting and repairing. The water tube boilers furnace area can be easily altered to meet the fuel requirement. There are certain demerits of water tube boilers over the fire tube boilers. Uh, they are less suitable for impure and sedimentary waters, so purest form of water is needed. Now, as a small deposit of a scale may cause the overheating and bursting of the tube, therefore safety may at the stake. Therefore, you need to use the pure feed water which is again you can say the, the economical aspect are always in uh, there while using the purity of while considering the purity of the feed water. Now, they require the careful attention, the maintenance costs are high. Failure in feed water supply even for a short period is liable to make the boiler overheated. So, at the end uh, in this particular lecture we had discussed about uh, uh, the various aspects of boiler including the classification. We had discussed that uh, n number of classifications can be given for the boiler classification that is purely based on uh, the n number of uses attributed to the boiler. We had discussed about the merit and demerit of uh, uh, the water tube boiler and the fire tube boiler. If you wish to further study, then we have enlisted couple of references for your convenience. You can go through. Thank you very much.